Next up, we have, with her talk entitled Sweet, Sour, and Spicy, is Jody. So this is about my recent residency, art residency in Thailand. I was there October, November. And um, I went there to learn about their culture, live with the locals, and hopefully meet some makers. So I met all kinds of species of makers. Yeah, so I was there for five weeks, and then I stayed an extra couple of weeks to be a tourist with my husband. So the first slide you see will be, um, this is Ang with his parents. He's the founder and maker of Kampung Residency in Doi Saket, a rural village north of Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. And you can see from the image how special they are and generous. This is where I live. He and a couple of villagers built these mud houses. My husband calls them affectionately Fred Flintstone houses. <laughs> They're empty cement bags filled with dirt that he stacked up and did this sort of adobe-like mud surface to them. This is the, the, the grounds it was on. It was very magical, inspirational. We were living in the wild, kind of. It was very scary because we had to live with beings who were very different from us. And some of the centipedes, and I had a little baby scorpion that came out in my drain and while I brushed my teeth every morning. 3 a.m. trips to the bathroom would be a snake. You know, and here's a little something that grew on my speedometer of my motorbike overnight. It was butterfly season, and they had moths this big. So, but, you know, Ong's not the only one who can make mud houses. This was really beautiful. And it, and it kind of made me realize, I, I came to terms with it fairly quickly, like a week and a half, and um, how the, I was among, uh, we, weren't, we weren't alone. And so here's a maker, here's a Hmong embroiderer from the tribal village. Here's someone from the village who made thatched roofs using the grasses from the local um, fields nearby. He taught me how to do it. He taught me how to make a basket from bamboo from scratch. So and, and another maker that I came across was this noodle person. I passed these draping noodles blowing in the wind every morning on my way to the village as they were drying. Then once I got to the village, their, their, the cooks there, the local people, would handcraft this food, their eggs, their, the insides taken out, scrambled with something, put back in, sticky rice wrapped in banana leaves, Everything's a presentation. And then you hear all about how wonderful Thai food is, and it really is. It, I can't even describe it. There are multiple layers of flavor. And their culture is such that most people don't have refrigerators, and some don't even have kitchens. Every night, they go out to the market. And they have these Rube Goldberg-type contraptions that they like kind of fold up at night when they go home. And they cook these delicacies like you can't even find here in the States. And that was um, what we would do every day for food. These are spirit houses. You find them on every piece of property in Thailand. They are where, usually on the corner, and they're in reverence to their ancestors and the earth gods. They make offerings to it to keep them happy. Another spiritual practice that I was fortunate to be there for was the Loi Pratong Paper Lantern Festival where they're making offerings to the gods after the rainy season in hopes for a good new harvest and agricultural season. And you can see they, we all, it's rice paper, bamboo, toilet paper stuck in paraffin. We light it, throw it up into the air, and they actually stay there. And we, we're told that they show up in the beaches of Australia the next morning. And here, the, the ruins of Ayatuya, as the uh, ancient city, the capital before Bangkok, and it was, um, ravaged by the Burmese during a war. And this is what it would have looked like back in the day, but this is a Doi Sutep, the current um, uh, temple that you can find in Chiang Mai in the top of the mountain. And the little monks down there, there are the novices that are being trained. Um, and they have a great mix of mysticism and Buddhism, as you can see here with this looming figure of a monk that's you see while driving, riding on a boat down the river, and this crops up out of nowhere. And another 
reverence they have is for their king, who just passed away, Rama the Ninth. And here you see this young boy with his schoolmates. This is the temple in the Grand Palace in Bangkok. You can see the, the beautiful decor. These women have been waiting. This is, photo was taken at 1.30. They have been waiting since 3 a.m., dressed in traditional mourning, neck to ankle, in order to see their king lying in state. And here is another maker. These were young musicians in a jazz, a jazz club um, outside the North Gate in Chiang Mai, and just full of spirit and light and love. And I wish I had 50 more slides I could show you. <laughs>